Launched in 2019, the fourth generation Raspberry Pi is a single board computer, and compared to earlier generations, it's significantly more powerful. It has many new features, including a, a much bigger processor, a new graphics processor, dual HDMI ports, more memory, gigabit ethernet connectivity, and a PCI Express connected USB 3.0 port. The extra capability that comes with this release draws more power, and as you'd expect, power generates heat. Engineers at the Raspberry Pi Foundation have already addressed many of the early overheating problems with firmware updates, but in this video we'll be looking at why, where, and how you should still place heat sinks on a Raspberry Pi 4. The circuit board is designed to dissipate heat, but depending on how it's being used, that will generally be insufficient. Without additional cooling, the Raspberry Pi's processor protects itself by lowering or throttling its clock speed, which results in decreased performance. So in short, it's easy to see why we would want to add heat sinks in an effort to prevent any potential overheating of components. That is to say, we want to maximize performance and the longevity of the components themselves. And that leads us to the next question, which is where should we actually place the heat sinks? There is some debate and conflicting opinions online still about which chips actually benefit from adding heat sinks. Some of that likely stems from the fact that early experiences with the Raspberry Pi 4 may differ from the present as firmware updates released over time have actually done a lot to reduce and resolve some of those operating temperatures that were reported. Some say there are no benefits to adding a heatsink to the RAM chip, for example, or even to the USB controller. But a lot of this can be influenced based on how the Raspberry Pi is being used. To keep this video short, I won't open that can of worms and we'll just say this. There are four components in particular that can run hot. The obvious and most important one being the processor itself, the USB controller, the Ethernet controller, and the RAM. Depending on how they're being used, each can exceed their maximum recommended operating temperature. For example, the USB controller temperature will increase depending on the type and number of USB devices you have connected to the board. A Raspberry Pi 4 board without a case, without heat sinks, running at idle, can easily reach a temperature of around 60 degrees Celsius. The processor temperature can easily exceed 80 degrees Celsius with a board in an enclosed case and a processor operating at just 25%. Suffice to say, it doesn't take much before cooling becomes a, a critical consideration. But now let's look at how do we actually place the heat sinks on these chips. Heat sinks specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi are often sold in packs like these or may even come with your Raspberry Pi if you purchased a kit. These packs often contain either three or four heat sinks, depending on the supplier. And the bigger square heat sink is designed to go on the processor chip. There is sometimes a rectangular chip, which is designed to go on the RAM. And the smaller square heat sinks are designed for the ethernet and USB controllers. First though, we'll place the large heat sink over the processor, which is the most critical one that we want to keep cool. We will peel back that protective layer over the tape on the underside of the heat sink. And note, this is not just double-sided tape, it's 3M Thermally Conductive Adhesive Transfer Tape. And it's been designed specifically for this purpose. They have good adhesion and they act as a thermal interface between the chip and the heatsink. If you're purchasing heat sinks without this, you'll need to use a thermal paste or heatsink compound before placing them on the chips. Next, we'll place a heat sink on the RAM. The USB and the Ethernet controller chips. And just like that, we're done. But here are some other things to keep in mind when it comes to cooling your Raspberry Pi. If you've had your Raspberry Pi sitting around for some time, make sure that you have the firmware up to date. 
When considering what heat sinks to buy, copper is one of the best materials to choose for heat sinks as it has a high thermal conductivity. Many though are often made of uh, an aluminium alloy, which are cheaper to make, but can still be effective. If you're going to enclose your Raspberry Pi in a case, try to choose a case that allows for heat dissipation. If the case is totally enclosed, placing heat sinks won't help a lot as the heat won't dissipate. Try to choose or make a case with lots of openings that will allow for passive heat dissipation from the heat sinks with natural ventilation and airflow. Kits that include cases often also come with a small fan like this one, which are designed to improve the airflow within the case and help extract heat from the enclosure. And one more factor to consider is how the board is orientated. Standing it upright with the GPIO headers at the bottom and the HDMI ports at the top helps improve convection and cooling. Tests have actually shown that compared to a Raspberry Pi sitting flat, it can help reduce the idle temperature by as much as 2 degrees Celsius and increase the time it takes before the processor begins to throttle the clock speed. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful or interesting, please click like and subscribe to the channel for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.